Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, now that we've got the deform bones in place, I think it's time for us to go ahead and parent or bind the character mesh to the armature. I think the first thing I'll do is go ahead and turn off the names and the axes um, in the viewport here. And also maybe even select the character and let's turn off that wireframe because I don't think I'm going to need that right now. I'm going to select the character and then shift select the armature. Oop, I need to get the armature into object mode here. So I'll select the character, shift select the armature, and then I'll press control P. Now we have, and this is the parent menu, and we have a couple of options for armatures here. We could, if we wanted, try to do parent with automatic weights. In other words, Blender will try and um, assign the proper weights to the mesh based on the position of the bones. But it doesn't always work well, especially when a character has um, things like we have here, like teeth and, and a mouth and that a relatively complex belt and uh, pouches. Even though at the very beginning we removed all the doubles and uh, made sure the center of our objects were in the center of the grid, sometimes this just doesn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and click it in to see if it, see if it works here. Let's check it out. And no, bone heat waiting failed to find solution. So I'm going to go ahead and undo this here. All right, so I'm going to select the mesh, shift select the armature, press control P, and this time I'm going to choose armature to form with empty groups. And what this will do is it will create vertex groups based on the names of each of the bones. So if I click this, now if I go over to, I'm going to select the character mesh here, and I'm going to come over here to the object data, and notice in the vertex groups how it's created all of these vertex groups based on the names of, of the bones. So we've got root, spine 1, spine 2, neck, head, etc. So now what we need to do, now that we have these um, empty vertex groups, we need to tell Blender what vertexes should be in each of those groups and how much influence the bone should have on it. So for example, let's say I'm going to choose the armature here and I'm going to go to pose mode. And if I choose the head here and I rotate the head bone a bit, you can see that it has no effect on on the character. And in fact, what I'm going to do too is it's moving kind of slow. So I'm going to select the character and I'm going to turn off um, the view of the subdivision surface modifier here. So there we go. So I've turned off the subdivision surface modifier so it'll move a little quicker here. So if I take this and move this bone, oh, one thing I have to do here, look at this. I still have from the mirroring uh, process, the uh, 3D cursor set to, uh, or the uh, pivot point set to the 3D cursor. So when I move this bone, when I rotate this bone, notice how it's trying to rotate from the uh, center of the grid. That's not good. We need to change that to, I'll change it to median point. And now if I rotate, it will actually rotate from the pivot point of the bone here. Okay, so let's tell Blender what vertices should be in the head vertex group. So I'm going to select the armature in pose mode. And then I'm going to come and select the character mesh. And then I'm going to switch from object mode to weight paint mode. Now that we're in weight paint mode, let's go over here to the tools tab. And you can see we've got all the tools for painting the weights 
over here. We've got the strength, the radius of the brush. We've got very similar tools that we had when we were um, texture painting. So now with this bone selected here, and I can choose the different bones now while I'm in weight paint mode, and, and you can see how the vertex groups change based on the selection you make in the viewport here. But with this head bone selected, I'm gonna take the strength of the brush all the way up, and I'm just gonna begin painting on the head here. I'm just gonna click and drag, and notice I'm painting, what I'm painting here is the influence of this selected bone on these vertices. So red is the most influence and blue is the least. So let me paint a little bit more here. I'm gonna paint some on top real quick. All right, so I've just painted the top of this head. Now watch what happens when I rotate the bone here. Ah, but you see how now the vertices that have pa been painted are staying with the bone. That bone is now influencing their movement. So let's paint a little bit more here on the head. I also uh, have X mirror on, so what I paint on one side, if it's able to mirror it over, should pop up over on the other side. The other way to do this is to actually select the vertices we want to be influenced and assign those di uh, directly to the vertex group, what I like to call point weighting. So instead of being in weight paint mode, I'm going to switch over to edit mode now. And I'm going to deselect all the vertices, and I'm going to go into wireframe mode here. Now that we're in vertex mode, we've got these uh, buttons over here, this assign, remove, select, and deselect. So if with the head bone, with the head vertex group selected, if I clicked select, now we can see the vertices that I painted with the, with the weight paint tool. But you can see the problem is, is there's a lot of um, vertices underneath there that I didn't, I wasn't able to really get easily with the uh, paint tool. So what I can do, there are a couple of things I can do here too. I can press the C key for the circle um, select tool, and I can scroll the wheel to make it bigger or smaller. And I can click and drag and paint and select these vertices, like that. That's one way. And once I've got those selected, I could then hit Assign, and that will add those to the vertex group here. I can also select it uh, with uh, Border Select, with the B key, just drag and select, like that, and Assign. I can also use the uh, control click and drag to kind of lasso select points as well. So there's just a couple of different ways that you can do this. I'm going to go ahead and use the circle select tool to try and grab these down here. And it looks like there are a couple of more down here as well as these points right in here. I'll lasso select these. All right, so now that I have that whole head selected, I'm pretty sure I have everything selected. Just to be sure, I'm gonna go ahead and use the border select here to try and get everything. Now that I have those selected, I'll make sure I have the proper vertex group selected and click assign. And now those points should be assigned to the head bone. So I'm going to go back to I'm going to go back to object mode real quick, and I'll select the armature, and it's still in pose mode here. And if I rotate this bone, you can see that the head follows along with that bone. Now, of course, you can see that the eyes aren't coming along. If I rotate the head, 
That looks kind of creepy. What we can do is parent the eyes to the head. So while the armature is still in pose mode here, I'm going to go ahead and select the eye. You can see it selected in wireframe here. And then shift select the bone and press control P to parent and parent to a bone. Let's try that again. Select the eye, shift select the bone and press control P and parent to the bone. So now we have the head weighted to the head bone and the eyes parented to the head bone. Here we can select the character and go back to weight paint mode and you can see when I select the head bone that um, all of those vertices are colored red. Now of course we're not going to want every single vertice to have 100% influence and one of the best ways to get precise influence from each of the vertices is to use this point weighting technique. So in the next video, we'll continue on with the weight painting of the character. Well, thanks for watching. See you then.